A couple years ago, I went to Cape Cod and joined the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy on a shark tagging mission. Recently, I journeyed back to this beautiful place to film sharks. This is the first of two episodes covering the adventure. All right, I'm at Nauset Beach here on the outer Cape. We're gonna be looking for some white sharks here. Now this beach is one that I visited here back in 2022. I did spot two or three white sharks here. Uh, today I'm gonna spend the whole day here uh, and, and view sharks. Depends on the weather, of course. The winds are a little higher than I'd like it to be, but um, you never know what you'll find out there. I'm just gonna set up the drone right now. The Sharktivity app, which I'll link in the video description below, uh, is what locals use to see uh, real-time locations of white sharks. Now those locations are approximate because remember uh, it's only giving you an approximate location because the shark is within the range of that acoustic receiver. So when a shark that is acoustically tagged, those little tags that you see on the back, uh, when that goes near one of those receivers, that receiver will ping and then that ping will go to the app and you can see a approximate live location of the shark. So last night at this beach, there was a shark that pinged. There's actually two sharks that pinged. One of them is a well-known shark that they call Bruce. So it pinged just about a mile away from here. So I'm gonna put up the drone, see if I can find any that are hanging out. Let's do it. It is not hard to be amazed by the scenery of the coast here in Cape Cod. The patterns of the natural beauty are easy to be mesmerized by. I usually start my flights by taking in this beauty. It didn't take long to find life, however. Just minutes into my first flight, I found a mola mola. Otherwise known as a sunfish, they are the largest bony fish in the sea, and here they are often mistaken for great white sharks. Just a little further south, I spotted my first shark. If you look closely, the shark appears to be shadowing a seal along the shore. I fly in close for a better look. The shark is nowhere near humans, despite it being a public beach. I was able to coordinate a real-time shark sighting protocol to inform park officials of sharks near humans. I make my first call to public safety and bring the drone back to change the battery. So the flags just went up, the shark flags. Just standard procedure here. Very different from what we do in California when there's a shark sighting with the context that there's a lot of bigger sharks close to shore here than Southern California, which is normally juvenile white sharks. That doesn't mean we don't get large white sharks in Southern California. It just means that the sharks that come close to shore here are much more likely to be engaged in hunting behaviors because of the abundance of seals here. So it's a whole different dynamic up here on the Cape than what I'm used to in Southern California. On the second flight, I found the shark again. It is still mirroring the seal, and I noticed that it is on a direct path to an area where several beachgoers have just arrived. Because of line of sight, heading south is necessary to maintain a safe operating visual between me and the drone. So I coordinate with safety officials who then send a ranger to pick me up so an update, what we're doing right now is we are headed uh, about two miles to the north because this shark is uh, it's getting really close to shore. We're gonna go up. Yeah. Take off. Once up in the air, it was time to find the shark again. It didn't take long. The shark was in the same spot and it seemed to not be shadowing the seal anymore. All right, we're still on this shark. Seems to be going after pieces of seaweed. Notice the frequency of that tail just moving much faster than it was earlier when we were just watching it. There he goes up again. But this is something I've seen a lot in California. Pretty interesting to see it here. There's no people around here, but this shark is showing a lot of interest in its environment right now. Then, 
the shark did something I did not expect. From the shore, you could see the splash. The shark was at the surface, and it appeared to have something in its mouth. He's eating something. Come check this out. He just grabbed something in his mouth. Incredible. Uh, he just ate something. This shark had just successfully caught a fish. Wow. Very close to shore. No, I, I, I'm good. I'm good here. Um, let me show you where he is. See his dorsal fins out. See how close he is? There's no people there. We're good. We're good. But he, he did eat something. Hunting behavior near shore and near humans is certainly a cause for alarm for local authorities because it may increase the chances of a shark approaching a human. At this point, the shark changes direction and begins heading north. If it continues on this course, it will eventually end up in the heart of Nauset Beach. I make the decision to fly a fresh battery and drive alongside the shark as it heads toward the populated beach. Here we go. A shark headed toward a populated beach is common in California, and I suppose it is just as common here in Cape Cod. But it is a bit different. Even though the swimmer doesn't know the shark is nearby, authorities rush over to the individual to inform him. And so we drove to that area to inform the other beachgoers. The beach was getting busier and busier. Because September is a very busy time of year for sharks in this area, public safety takes no chances and everybody is informed onto the beach. So they pulled everybody out of the beach here. I'll be the guy that ruins everyone's day. <laughs> the shark continues its northern path, crossing the main part of the beach, which is also the part with the lowest visibility today. Okay, I gotta bring the drone back. Eventually, it reappears just north of the populated beach, and I lose the shark to the murky waters. As the day winds down, I too head north to see if I can find the shark there. The amount of sharks I saw today wasn't that great. I didn't see a whole ton of sharks. Honestly, I still believe there are more sharks in, in the California area than out here. Uh, but who knows? Uh, what I do know is that the uh, way that public safety officials react to shark sightings here is very, very different from California. It's a whole different dynamic here because you have active predation, active foraging going on near populated beaches, something that isn't necessarily the case in Southern California. Now, the beach I was just visiting here, there was a fatality some five, six years ago. I don't know, uh, I just checked out that beach and it's super, super sketchy. The way it's murky, I found two sharks almost immediately behind the murk. And then as soon as they would go into these murky areas, they would just completely disappear near seals. It's just a, it's just a dynamic that I definitely would not wanna put myself near. Uh, the sharks get in that murky water and that's when you have the risk of being mistaken identity uh, so I don't know I would not swim here is what I'm trying to say coming up in part two I go aboard the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy's research vessel in search of sharks and I encounter the most unique shark I've yet to see find out why in part two Thank <laughs> you.